Okay, so these next couple of problems are going to be dealing with a new formula. Newton's law of cooling. But here's what you need to understand. It's a law of cooling, which means it's still a decay model, but because it's cooling, it's a little bit different formula-wise than the growth and decay models. All right? So here's Newton's law of cooling. So let's check it out. I know it looks like a very interesting formula, but it's kind of a lot of fun. So first off, capital T stands for the surrounding temperature. So what's the temperature in the air? Okay? U sub zero, anytime we sub zero, see a sub zero, it's the initial amount, right? So it's the initial temperature of the heated object. What was the initial temperature of that object you were heating? Like in our next example, we're going to be talking about a pizza. So T is time. Time could be any units again, gratefully. And K is the rate. Now, since this is a law of cooling, you know that the rate has got to be what? Yeah, this rate has got to be negative because it's a law of cooling. Okay, so hang in there. I got a couple of examples for us. One's a pizza oven example, and the next one, well, the next one's kind of a very interesting real life example. Okay, so let's talk about that pizza problem. They told us that a pizza baked at 450 degrees Fahrenheit is removed from the oven at 3 p.m. and into a room that has a constant temperature of 73 degrees, right? And then they say after five minutes, the pizza is at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, here's the thing. We have, since this is talking about a room temperature, I know I'm dealing with Newton's law of cooling. Got it? Because they said after five minutes, the pizza is at 300 degrees, which implies that the pizza cooled to 300 degrees. So now I'm dealing with Newton's law of cooling. So we are going to write the generic formula, and then we'll get to the specific formula. So I just wanted to make sure... Agreed? All right. So remember, this is the temperature at time t. This is the ending temperature at time t. So remember that. Okay, so what did they tell us? They told us that we have the pizza baked at 400 degrees, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So our initial temperature is 400 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And it was removed at 3 p.m. And the room temperature is 73 degrees. So our room temperature is 73 degrees. That's what capital T stood for, right? Okay. Now, in the last few problems, we needed to know the initial amount and the rate in order to come up with the specific formula. Agreed? Well, here I need to know three things. I need to know the initial temperature of the heated object, I need to know the atmosphere temperature, and I also need to know the rate. Okay, this is what I need. Well, in this case, gratefully, I have two out of the three. The third thing I don't have, which, no surprise, is I don't have the K. Well, I gotta go find K. You with me? So the way we're gonna find K is we're going to use that last piece of information that says after five minutes, the temperature of the pizza is now 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I can start plugging things in. With me? Okay, so at the end of five minutes, we have 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have 300 equal to capital T, which is 73 degrees, plus the initial temperature, which was 450, minus the surrounding temperature of 73, equals e to the kt. k is what I'm looking for. Time is 5 minutes. Time to simplify things a little bit. I am going to figure out that parenthesis right here. And I ended up with... 377 e to the 5k. 
Okay. And now that I've simplified that, let's just do our algebra. Minus the 73 on both sides. So we have 227 equaling, right? And then I am going to divide. Agreed? So let me just move it up here. So divide two, both sides by that 377. And then finally, I've got to take the natural log, don't I? All right. Just like in the past, just like the past few problems. And then to finally get k by itself, I have to divide both sides by 5, right? Okay, so I've got the natural log of this lovely fraction. And again, we're not rounding until the end, so I'm not even going to bother with the decimal. But if you want to punch that into your calculator, you should find that as a negative number. Cool? All right. Now, our specific formula. If you allow me to, I'm going to do a little rearranging on this generic that I wrote up here. My capital T is 73. This parenthesis was a 450 minus 73, wasn't it? Okay, so that is going to be 377, if you allow me just to write the 377 in. And then it gets multiplied by E raised to this lovely rate and multiplied by time. So I have the time multiplied by this lovely fraction. Okay, got it. Cool? Okay, so now that I have the specific formula, I need to get myself some board space here. Now that I have the specific formula, I can start answering their question. And their question is this. At what time can you start eating the pizza if you want the temperature of the pizza to be 125 degrees Fahrenheit? I know that's an interesting question. Most of us don't think about what temperature our pizza needs to be at in order to eat it. Most of us just blow on it and cool it off that way. Why? Because we don't want to burn our tongue. But, you know, whoever is wanting to know this answer is being very specific because they know they can eat the pizza when it's at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And it won't hurt their mouth, I guess. All right. So, we'll leave that for now. So, my uh, ending temperature, right? is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the ending. So, let's plug it in. Let's see what we get, because I'm looking for time. So, 125 equaling my specific formula. And yes, it does help to just write it as 377 versus the parentheses, because you know, the parentheses can take a little bit too long uh, to rewrite. I already have to write my rate, which is going to take some space. Okay, so I'm looking for this time. And you know, if I divide by 5, it's the same as multiplying by a fifth, isn't it? So I think I'm just going to write it that way to save myself some room. Okay, your algebra. Minus the 73 on both sides, right? So we have 52 equaling this lovely side. And then what are you going to have to do? Yeah, you're going to have to divide by 377, right? And you can see what you're going to have to do next. Yep, you're going to have to take that natural log on both sides, aren't you? You know, the challenging part of these problems is just keep writing out every line, but it's important to write out every line. Please, write it all out. 
Okay, so natural log of this lovely fraction. And you know what you're going to have to do, right? Yep, you're going to have to divide by this parenthesis of the one-fifth natural log of 227. That was 227, right? There we go. 377. Okay. So, we're going to divide both sides by this thing. I'm running out of board space. So, when I divided both, thing, both sides uh, by this lovely parenthesis, I ended up with approximately 19.5 minutes. Which means, if the pizza was removed at 3 p.m., they can start eating the pizza at about 3.20 p.m. Got it? Okay. So some of the other questions are asking you, you just got to go on the graphing calculator and graph them. And then look at an intersection. Cool? Okay, so you have fun with this. I got another one of these Newton cooling problems. And it's kind of cool because it's more apropos to real life than cooling a pizza down.